Oh, <laughs> maybe that uh, maybe that was the the whole reason he's playing the the deck he is now. Yeah, it's, oh yeah, that deck's pretty good. Or right. maybe I'm just fooling myself. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Uh, all right. So here we go. Round number six already here at the Memphis Regional Championships. If you guys are watching at home, get on social media, use the hashtag play Pokemon. Tell us who you think is going to win this matchup. Is it going to be Ryan Grant with his Greninja deck who is mulliganing once again? Or will it be Azul with his Kalisopod deck? Uh, I think I know the answer, but who do you think is favored in this matchup? <laughs> well, uh, if you're playing a lot of enhanced hammers, that's a, that seems to be a pretty good thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have one Pokemon that is weak to grass and uh, a Pokemon that is grass. Yeah, and, and uh, if you can't pick up your guys, that uh, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. I think this will definitely be an uphill battle for Ryan uh, and this Greninja deck. You know, in some ways, Greninja is always an uphill battle. You always have that threat of you know, starting the lone Froakie and never setting up and just getting knocked out right away. But um, it seems like that has not been an issue for him so far. Both these players are undefeated here in round number six, five and oh, and we'll see what will happen here. Yep. Uh, Zul right now going to set down his prizes for us. Uh, as long as he doesn't see anything too wild, I think he'd be in a pretty good spot in this matchup. Just the fact that you're able to take out all these Greninja, you can remove splash energy so that Ryan doesn't get to play them all back down. And you can lock out the ability of uh, Giant Water Shuriken if it ever does get online. Uh, really just a great way to counter this deck, honestly. Yeah, so nothing too big in the prizes for Azul, but ooh, on Ryan's side we see that Starby and also Greninja, so not great prizes for him. Yeah, if you're gonna prize one piece, you might as well prize two, unless you see us playing the 2-1 line that I've seen be somewhat popular now, but uh, not sure about that. Uh, I guess the positive note, he didn't prize any Frogadier, <laughs> which can, uh, <laughs> that can be pretty bad for you. That is true. So, all right, here we go. Round number six here at the Memphis Regional Championships. Uh, Ryan starting off with that Froakie going up against Mewtwo. Uh, <laughs> what do you know? One of the only cards from the XY Evolutions expansion that's seeing any tournament play right now. <laughs> Except for the Mewtwo. energies. The ener those energy cards look nice. <laughs> oh, yeah, those are great. But uh, in terms of, like, Pokemon and trainers. Yeah. <laughs> Not much really stuck around. Welcome, welcome, you two. All right. <laughs> uh, so Ryan starting off with the N after attaching his energy to Froakie. Yep. Uh, Mewtwo's psychic attack does do 20 plus 20 for each energy on your opponent's active Pokemon. So uh, if yeah, it's Professor Kukui, yeah, we double call this energy, you can see a psychic Ryan, turn one knockout. Ryan, aware of this, now knows he's uh, got an Ultra Ball, has to get more Pokemon down on the field. <laughs> does not want to be left in a bad spot. Uh, one play I'd like to note, Ryan real quick, when he looked at his hand, he did have Splash Energy, which is a card you generally want to play down on your Froakies and your Frogadiers so you can get all these cards back. But I think he got the memo about Azul's deck, and he knows that there's four Enhanced Hammers waiting, and you can't afford to miss that energy drop. Yeah, so Ryan just playing it safe, getting that second Froakie down. Uh, you could also, oh, double colorless right on the Mewtwo. Look at that. Getting ready. Oh, that's bad. He just and, uses Psychic. <laughs> and, uh, and there it is. <laughs> uh, so Ryan did mulligan a bunch to start this game. Azul was stacked with like 10 cards in his opening hand, and Ryan played the N on his opening turn, and it seems like that has affected Azul quite a bit. Draws almost nothing off of his six cards, just yeah. a double colorless energy for the Mewtwo. But I don't know. If he doesn't draw something, I mean... A Greninja player setting up all their Greninja and you doing nothing is a bad recipe for you. Yeah, weakness doesn't matter if you don't get attacked. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Ryan is going to be able to get all of these Frogadiers down, uh, which means that if this one card in his hand is a, a playable supporter or something helpful, he's going to be able to continue this onslaught here. Uh, this really nice setup. Yeah, great start for Ryan. Uh, gets the turn one Froakie, turn two Frogadier, water duplicates. That's all you can ask for. Just a quick psychic. From Azul, he does get a knockout, so he's putting a little bit of pressure on, but uh, I'm sure he would love to have more Pokemon on his board. But, oh, Ryan's actually going to play the end. He has to. He, uh, he, his hand, he didn't have much else there for him, and uh, unfortunately, he's going to have to let Azul come back into this game now. 
Uh, we don't know what that prize was that Azul t uh, took. Maybe it was a card that was able to get his hand back into play, but Ryan really just needs to put on some pressure here. Uh, he'd love to find himself a Greninja. If he's able to uh, lock out abilities with a Shadow Stitching before Azul ever gets a Lele off, uh, that's, that can be pretty big. Definitely. Uh, but, you know, from Azul's side, as bad as your start was, this actually could turn out fine. Uh, you got the turn, you got the knockout on the Frogadier. That's the important thing. Uh, if he finds Golisopod GX here, he can first impression and just keep putting the pressure on. That's all you can really do against Greninja. And Ryan did not find a Greninja on that turn, just retreated his Frogadier and passed. Yep. Azul now, he's got the Ultra Ball in hand, so uh, looks like he can either try to find that Golisopod right now or focus on a Tapu Lele uh, to get his setup really rolling here. Don't know what else he has in his hand, but it looks like he's setting up for a pretty nice Bridget right now. Sure seems like I got to think he wants to get Glycopod this turn. Uh, one thing you don't want to give to a Greninja deck is time. One of the biggest problems with Greninja is you just fall too far behind before you can actually set up your Pokemon. So each knockout you can take early in the game is a big deal. Yep, uh, his hand, we did see a little bit of it. It does have Golisopod, a choice band for his Trubbish, and he's holding a Sycamore in Ooh. hand. So exactly what he wants to see here, able to take the knockout on the Froki as well. So Zul definitely in the driver's seat. Sure seems like it. He's got the energy on that Golisopod GX, gets all his basics down. And next turn, if he finds double Colas energy, he can use that big armor press. And Ryan's gonna be in some trouble. We do see he finds Evo Soda, so does find his first Greninja. And the Super Rod's gonna shuffle in, probably Frogadier, and some energy, per, perhaps a Froki as well, but no, just like, looks like two water energy and a Frogadier. Yep. And we'll see if he has a supporter card for the turn. Yeah, uh, he's uh, in a pretty good spot if Azul doesn't find uh, a way to swap out. It's, uh, it's unlikely, being that he has some pretty good cards available to him, and uh, it, that double colorless really could just uh, continue all of this power here, but Ryan did find a choice band. He's able to get a little extra damage down on the Glycopod here, too. So, uh, and if this Splash Energy is able to stick, he can pick all these pieces back up, too. Yeah, it seems like only one Greninja for Ryan, though, he would love to have multiple in play. He does have an Ultra Ball if he wanted to go that route. Perhaps Ultra Ball for another Greninja in this situation so he could then evolve to Greninja Break on the following turn. Yep. It looks like he's having some problems figuring out which cards to discard. It looks like Tapu Fini GX as well as Skyla are going to head to the discard pile. Yeah, and this means he has no supporter left in his hand, uh, so he might just go ahead and grab one now before the Garbodor comes into play. Mm. He also has uh, Field Blower in his hand too, so he might uh, just grab Lele and hold on to it uh, for when he wants to grab the supporter. Looks like he's eyeing up the Sycamore right now, though. Yeah, just gonna wonder tag for that Professor Sycamore so he can have a supporter card for the following turn. This is a scary position to be in. He can either uh, Moonlight Slash for 90 damage, keeping the energy there, or go for the full 110 and try to set up for a two-hit knockout that way. Uh, Kyle, which one do you think he should do? Uh, I, I feel like it, you have to judge Azul's hand here and, and think if he has the Enhance Hammer or not. And I feel like if you, if you keep the Splash Energy, you have your best chance of winning just because you're going to need these resources to stay in the fight. Having that Frogadier to play on the Froki and the Greninja to play right back down on the Frogadier is really what's going to keep him having the consistent amount of attacks uh, attackers. And that 20 extra damage may not be terribly relevant. So we did see the Professor Sycamore, but I don't believe we saw a double colorless energy from Azul, which means he will not be able to knock out this Greninja unless he also drew a Float Stone. So he now has a second Golisopod GX down, and Garbotoxin is in effect here. Does he have a Float Stone? No, just a first impression for 60 damage. This could be the opening Ryan needed. Yeah, you never want to do a first impression for, for 30 like we were talking about. And uh, it just happened here just because Azul wasn't able to find what he needed. He had a lot of great cards available to him off that Sycamore. Uh, being able to find just a Floatstone or a double colorless energy. Uh, even the Enhanced Hammer just to slow Ryan down a little bit would have been great, but missed all of those. Yeah, so not a great turn for Azul. Uh, seems like he's still okay. He has the Garbotoxin in effect. 
Got a couple of Glycepod GX up and running. One thing he's missing is he has no free retreater. So even yeah. if he does get knocked out, he would really like to have a way to bring that Glycepod to the active spot without just promoting. Yeah. Do you see the field blower from Ryan getting rid of the tool on that Garboder? So now he's free to use abilities if he can find that Greninja break, which he does. And we'll see if he can find another Greninja as well. well he does. And Evo Soda. So yeah. this is a great turn for Ryan, advancing his board even further. He'll have access to Giant Water Shuriken which can lead to a knockout on this active Glycopod GX, and he might be making a comeback. Yeah, we also saw the uh, the Espeon that was in his hand. That means uh, he could have potentially start to de-evolve. This is one deck that you can't really de-evolve too well, though. Uh, <laughs> the 60 damage doesn't work too well when all of the basics underneath have 70 hit points. Uh, but he can start to work on that if he wants to. And uh, we're going to see him just start to put some pressure on these Glycopods. If there are no Glycopods, you're just playing against a Garbodor Mewtwo deck, and uh, <laughs> he can beat that. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mewtwo not very effective against Greninja. <laughs> and I think Ryan trying to decide if he wants to return the energy to his hand. It's tough. With Moonlight Slash here. I feel um, like it's hard to dodge the Enhanced Hammer twice. <laughs> And he'd really like to have an energy to attach uh, in the following turn. But uh, yeah, it looks like he's just going to go with that 90 damage. Yeah, I I wonder if he perhaps miscalculated the uh, Moonlight Slash would oh. have been 10 short of a knockout. But oh, the Acerola picking up that Glycopod GX, removing all the damage. And that is a backbreaking thing to see. Uh, all that damage you just did evaporating. And now a new Glycopod GX coming out. The Enhanced Hammer discarding the Splash Energy. First impression for the knockout. And uh, this all of a sudden does not look great for Ryan. Yep. That's a, definitely a big swing turn. It looks like they were talking about uh, if the Glycopod uh, was being promoted, if it was going to be doing the 30 or the 120. Uh, but I believe that Glycopod was already down before the yeah. switching went on. But good to make sure. <laughs> Yeah, so now Azul down to three prizes uh, against Ryan Six. Can he make a comeback here? That uh, Splash Energy being discarded by Enhanced Hammer was devastating. Yeah. Otherwise, he would have had a whole line of Greninja break in his hand. Now he's going to have to draw into more and more pieces. We see the first one with Greninja break, though. Yeah. Uh, the rest of his hand, however, not too great. He drew into another of his Brooklet Hill and a lot of Froki. Uh, <laughs> they do the same thing, so that's not very great for him there. Uh, he does have an energy available to him for a giant water shirk and just uh, probably going to start setting up the, yeah, on the bench there so that he can maybe get this two, uh, this two hit knockout rolling for him in the future turn. See another Moonlight Slash, this time for 60. No more choice ban. Uh, is setting up a knockout for the next turn. But we'll see if Azul can finally find a double colorless energy to perhaps get a knockout. Otherwise, uh, he probably need another Ace Rolo, or he does have Guzma in hand. He could go after the benched Greninja here. Many options for our Galisopod player. We'll see which one he wants to go for. Yeah, he has the, the Guzma there. Uh, that looks like probably the best line for him if he's not able to find cards like the Floatstone or the Acerola uh, or the Double Colorless, of course. And uh, he could just take out that Greninja on the bench there, and that just leaves Ryan with a Greninja break and a Froakie. And it doesn't matter if he has pieces from the Splash Energy afterwards if he doesn't have the Evolution line kind of set up on his bench already. Yep, so there's the Guzma bringing out that Greninja on the bench and first impression doing 120 damage times two for the weakness means that Greninja is going to be knocked out and Ryan finds himself down four prize cards here. What can he do to come back? Well, looks like he would need two water energy if he was going to be able to get a giant water shuriken on the active and then retreat and use Espeon to de-evolve those Glycopod. Uh, Zul doesn't have a free retreater available to make the big Lysopod, which is a Wimpod right now, uh, be able to do the full 240 damage. So maybe that line is available to him. He might just also just have to keep attacking and try to set up more of these <laughs> Frokies, but there's only two prize cards left, so I'm running out of time here. Yeah, we'll see if he does go for that SB on EX play. I mean, it's been interesting to note that Azul got Garbotoxin out early in the game, but after that field blower just has not found another tool 
So Ryan has been free to use his abilities, but looks like he's wishing he had basic water energy and all he has is splash energy in his hand. But he'll play an end here. This could be the start of a comeback. Putting Azul down to two cards. Yeah, he, uh, early in the game, he did Super Rod two waters in, I believe. So he should have some available to him. But uh, having that Starmie line prized has been pretty difficult uh, against his setup here. He just hasn't had water energies uh, as freely as he'd like to. So six cards here. Just one. Ryan drawing two splash energy. You cannot use those for giant water shirk. And you also cannot attach them to Espeon EX. So even though Splash Energy is great, I'm sure Ryan just wishes they were basic water energy right <laughs> That's here. That's right. Uh, he can try. We're not going to let him, but yeah. <laughs> uh, looks like he might just have to uh, put some damage on the bench Golisopod and hit the active. Maybe he can set up a double knockout uh, in the following turns, but it's just so difficult when you don't have a Greninja already on the bench. That means no Greninja break is uh, available unless he plays Wally. <laughs> And looks like he's gonna go full spread mode here. Uh, put six damage counters on the benched Wimpod over there. And I wonder if he'll even attack with this Greninja. Looks like no. Uh, he can <laughs> hit for 20 damage. Oh, he's actually just gonna go for the Tapu Storm GX. I was thinking he could do 20 damage, set up the active for uh, the Spion EX and then Giant Water Shirk and the Bench Wimpod next turn and go for the full sweep with Espeon EX, but it looks like just the Tapu Storm is going to be his choice. Yeah. And again, Azul has no free retreating Pokemon, as you pointed out, so no easy way for him to use first impression for 120 damage. Um, if he did have Choice Ban and Double Colas, he could Crossing Cut GX to win the game, but yeah. off an end of two cards doesn't seem very likely. Yeah, he does have the Floatstone, so uh, felt okay promoting the, the Garbodor right there. And it looks like he has a Guzma as well. Uh, so he can start to target down one of these Pokemon on the bench if he wants to. Uh, that Greninja does look like a pretty great Pokemon to start targeting down here. Yep, here we do see Floatstone. So Garbotoxin back in effect. It's going to make Ryan's comeback much tougher. And so will this Guzma. Probably going to go after that Greninja break, but actually, no, going after a Tapu Lele GX. Azul's just going to pass. Wow. Uh, he might have counted that Ryan's low on water energies and not going to be able to get out of Staryu. <laughs> he might think that this Lele is just stuck. If there's no splat, he can't use splash energy to retreat, and he doesn't play Guzmas in his deck. Azul might just be able to sit here and pass for. Uh, how many ever cards Ryan has left and he wins. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is something I did not consider. Yeah, he's just going to try to deck him out. <laughs> Says, I think you're out of waters. <laughs> uh, he, he might be right. I mean, Ryan only has a few cards left in his deck. I mean, even if he draws a water at this point, he might not have enough time to even take enough prizes to win. Yeah, uh, Azul's going to just count right now and... Uh, I think I've already seen like four or five in there. If he has some prize, maybe that, that could just be it. <laughs> Certainly could be. Ryan draws another card, and it is not a water energy. And Greninja decks tend to not use Guzma either, so that will not be an option for him to switch. Uh, he does play Super Rod, so potentially he could Super Rod and uh, shuffle three water energy back into his deck. Is it just the one? Yeah, he, uh, he That's used That's it. Yeah. Ryan draws, well, his last card was water energy, and he had two energy prized, as well as the Starmie. <laughs> but uh, Azul, properly reading the situation, it says, eh. I don't think you have it. <laughs> seems like didn't. you're out of water energy. Uh, how about we just bring out this Tapu Lele and see what happens? And Well, he won. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty strong read because there were three water energies that could have potentially been in his deck, with two being in the prize cards and one actually being in the deck just at the bottom, though. Uh, but if he did have the Guzmas available, he would be able to continue just bringing up that Lele, and uh, eventually Ryan just does run out of energies. <laughs> <laughs> huh, that is not the way I expected that game to end, but hey, that's just why Azul is constantly winning at these tournaments. Uh, he's a multiple-time regional champion, and it's for plays like that. Being able to adapt in the middle of the game and find an unconventional way to win. Uh, it's arguable that he would have won even just by attacking, but yep. gave himself the 
best way, the highest percentage way to win that game. And hey, he's up one to zero. Yeah, I mean, why why risk uh, letting your opponent take a prize card, which could have been more waters, and then let him back into the game? You could just lock him out like that. And uh, it's honestly just muscle memory at this point for Azul. He's played this matchup so many times, and he's been in these situations so often that he just sees the lines all the time. So we see Azul has one Garboder, one Trubbish, and one Tapu Koko in his prized card. Nothing too big, but might be annoying to have a Tapu Koko prized. For Ryan, nah, nothing big. Yeah. There's a Splash Energy, a Froki, but no Frogadier, no Greninja. Looks good. Yeah, uh, has a field blower at the bottom of his prizes, which means that uh, if he draws into it uh, at the normal time of taking prizes, it's probably right about the time that your opponent gets a Garbodor with a tool, so that could come into play too. And if you're watching at home, tell us who you think is going to win this matchup. Use that hashtag play Pokemon on Twitter and tell us, do you think Azul is going to close out this series or will Ryan make the comeback with Greninja after he uses Brooklyn Hill there to search for a Froki, put it on his bench. <laughs> and uh, back to Azul's turn. He will also use Brooklyn Hill, even though I don't think there are actually any targets in his deck. Yeah, but he does not have any targets, <laughs> but always good to get all this information right now. Uh, the opening search, you're always just trying to figure out what's in your prizes. Uh, do I need to change up my game plan? And this might give him a little more uh, of an idea of what supporter he wants to start the, the game with or uh, what his line should be in this beginning turn. Yeah, and that's a great tip for anybody just starting off. Uh, anytime you can get extra information, take the opportunity. Use Brooklyn Hill like Azul just did. He got to search through his deck and see if any important cards were prized, which can inform what plays he makes in future turns. Uh, it might seem like a trivial thing or even like a cheap thing to like look through your deck even though you know it'll fail, but it gives you crucial information uh, you never know what's in your prize cards until you get to look through your deck and okay now he knows yeah maybe orion's octillery or remory's hiding in his deck <laughs> <laughs> who knows well uh ryan just needs to do one thing on this turn and that is get frogadier <laughs> out and looks like he's got that ready for himself yep well he's, he needs frogadier he also needs a water energy <laughs> yeah that too <laughs> and we'll see if he has one i didn't see one in his hand yet but there's a chance he has a supporter maybe professor sycamore or something like that to dig for a water energy yeah and you normally wouldn't see someone using uh evo soda right now to evolve when you know you can just get the frog eaters into play with water duplicates but it looks like that's what his hand's telling him he has to do he's going to use this ultra ball and thin out even more uh, get all these pokemon into play and then use that supporter for the turn yeah, so we see another frog eater coming down and ultra ball for staryu Ryan's saying, nope, that's not happening again. I'm not going to run out of energy this time. I need those waters. <laughs> and we do see Professor Sycamore. Will he find a water energy off those seven? And it looks like the answer is yes. But will um, he want to attach the splash energy or yeah. the basic water energy? He also drew a frogadier, which mm. <laughs> you don't want to do that when you're about to get them for free. Yeah, I was going to say one of the downsides of actually using that Evo Soda is if you draw a frogadier off of your sycamore, you can't play it down. Right. Uh, so now he's only going to be able to water duplicates for one Frogadier. Still has three in play, but still would have been nice to have that extra one. Yeah. Uh, Azul's eyes might light up here, honestly, just seeing one Frogadier down. So, oh, maybe it's prized. Yeah. Uh, no, Ryan's just unlucky and drew into it. <laughs> <laughs> so now back to Azul's turn. He's going to play an N. So both players will shuffle in and draw six cards. Since no prizes have been taken yet. But uh, yeah, Frogadier is the key to that Greninja deck. Use that water duplicates attack, get to search for up to three Frogadier, put them right on your bench. Even though they're not basic Pokemon, the attack lets you do it. So you just put down a bunch of stage one Pokemon, lets you get one step closer to that Greninja. And we'll see if Azul got any way to move his Wimpod out of the active spot. It's not the first turn anymore. He cannot Wimp out and uh, it has a three retreat cost. So he doesn't find a float stone. He's kind of stuck. Yeah, he found, uh, Azul found a lot of reactive cards. He's got an enhanced hammer in hand, but he wants to play that on the turn that he's taking a knockout. He doesn't want Ryan to just play another one down. Uh, and then he's stuck there. <laughs> and well, Ryan's gonna do it anyways. But uh, 
Uh, Azul also had double colorless energy. Doesn't want to play that down just yet because Ryan plays enhanced hammers of his own. He could just Skyla and grab that right now if he wanted. So uh, wisely going to hold on to all these cards and hopefully just finds that extra piece for himself, uh, that float stone or maybe uses Ace Arola next turn to get himself out of the active if Wimpod survives this attack. It looks like Ryan going to use the Moonlight Slash. Uh, goes to discard the water energy or the splash energy, but <laughs> you can I keep it. Turn his hand. <laughs> and all right, so we do see enhanced hammer as well as double colas energy. Something we did not see at all in the last game, but it's going to be very scary for Ryan, a fully powered Galisopod GX, able to use armor press. And uh, Zul, strangely enough, is losing this game. Usually Greninja is the one behind at the start of a game, but. Now Azul is the one having to make the comeback. Yeah, uh, Azul gets to put himself in a pretty good spot here. Uh, shuffling back in that splash energy with his end now. And he's going to be able to remove three pieces of Greninja into the discard pile, which means Ryan needs to find cards like Rescue Stretcher or his Super Rod to continue to get all these frogs into play. And that uh, armor press will be a knockout on that Greninja. And if you're Ryan, I think the one thing you want to find here is that Tapu Fini GX and Tapu Storm that thing back into your opponent's deck. Enhanced Hammer works as well. And we'll see if he decides to uh, attack with Greninja Break this turn now. So we see the Lily. We don't see that very often. Yeah, usually it's Azul playing that in his Volcanian deck. But uh, <laughs> no, Ryan's going to get some use out of it. And, uh, wow. Really good spot here, was able to pick up uh, two more evolutions with his Frogadiers, and his hand is pretty stacked. He's got uh, Skyla to go get another supporter or whatever card he would need uh, item-wise. He's got Starmie Space Beacon now. Oh, no water <laughs> energy in his discard pile, but just the splash energy. Now Azul knows he has a Brooklyn Hill in his hand. <laughs> Uh, interestingly enough, you could actually use Space Beacon even if there are no water energy in your discard pile. So uh, if Ryan did announce Space Beacon, he would have to discard his Brooklyn Hill, but looks like I'm just going to have him take it back. Yeah. Well, uh, wise choice here from Ryan, not using Moonlight Slash instead uh, going with... Uh, locking out the abilities because Azul had two Tapu Lele in his hand and he was going to definitely get himself a good supporter there. Sure seems like it. We're going to see another usage of Brooklet here, Brooklet Hill here uh, from Azul. going to search through his deck and see, oh man, there's still no fighting or water Pokemon. Where's my, my Passimian? How unlucky. Yeah, where's my Remory? <laughs> But once again, just uh, refreshing himself, seeing if anything important is prized. Yep. Also gets to just look to see, probably wants to know about the double colorless energies and uh, see if they're all there. Yeah. And uh, I actually do think that uh, Ryan used Moonlight Slash last turn because of the armor press. Oh, that's right, yeah. So yeah, he must have done that for the 70 damage. But interestingly enough, Azul actually played down Tapu Lele and didn't wonder tag. Um, I think he just wants the Pokemon to play a Floatstone on, honestly, if, if it comes up. Yeah, that, that could certainly be it. It's just not a play we see very often. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need this ability. <laughs> So Ultra Ball will discard that Mewtwo, which was the hero in the first game, got a knockout. Oh, yeah. But uh, here is simply going to the discard pile with that Ultra Ball. He did his job. <laughs> <laughs> Evolutions is proud. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, just a first impression for 60 damage. Now, he does have Garbotoxin in effect now, so those Greninja Break won't be as useful. But I think it's got to be painful having an opportunity to get a knockout on that Greninja break and once again failing. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the downsides of Galisopod GX. It does take a little bit of maintenance to continually attack for big damage. It's not quite like Zoroark GX where once you have all the Pokemon out, you're hitting for 120 damage constantly. Uh, you have to be switching your Pokemon in and out. Otherwise, you don't get that bonus damage and you get some pathetic turns where you're just like, eh, 30. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Not what you want to be doing on, like, turn five. Yeah. Attacking and only putting one uh, dice down is usually bad. <laughs> 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 
Looks like we're going to see another Moonlight Slash for 90 damage thanks to Choice Band. And we'll see if Azul got something this time. Uh, it's a little less exciting now to attach double colorless energy and attack because your Golisopod will probably get knocked out in the following turn, but we'll see if he has any better options. Yeah, if he had an Acerola, that'd be a pretty great card for him here. He'd be able to pick up all this damage, uh, play right down into a new Golisopod and uh, knock out this Greninja break, even if he had an Ant Amber too along with that. But uh, it's a lot to ask for. Uh, he did find the double colorless finally, so there's a way to remove this Greninja. It just might not be as clean as it could be. So we saw the heavy ball there. That's a card we don't see a lot of, but it's a perfect fit for this deck. Since so many Pokemon actually have a three retreat cost, there is Golisopod GX, Wimpod actually has three retreat, Garboder has three retreat. Yep. Uh, so heavy ball is almost like search your deck for any Pokemon you want. Uh, the only things it can't get are the Tapu Lele GX and Trubbish, and then the other random basic Pokemon you have in there. But being able to search out that many Pokemon is pretty great. Yeah, it's uh, also you don't have to get rid of all those resources with the Ultra Ball that you normally have to. It's, it's just nice to be able to hold on to these cards that you know you're going to need. So Azul did commit that double colorless energy to his active Glycopod GX. And we see the Ultra Ball for a second Garboder. He only has one tool in play, but you know if something were to happen to one of his Garboder, he's got a backup. And this is a fully developed board at this point. Three Golisopod, two Garboder, Garbotoxin in effect. And we see the Crossing ah. Cut GX to protect that Golisopod GX, knowing that he's safe because Giant Water Shuriken can't be used in the face of Garbotoxin. Yeah, it's a really good spot here. Ryan's going to have to find uh, the Field Blower and the Water Energies to be able to start getting the, some pressure onto that Glycopod. And Ryan's had a really hard time doing that. Uh, he does, however, find that Field Blower now. Bad news for Azul. Garbotoxin is gone, so Giant Water Shuriken's open. Does Ryan find any Water Energy, though? Yep, just one giant water shuriken would be able to knock out that Goliathopod. I know the dice can be a, a little bit confusing when you got <laughs> a four on there. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, what is it? I think it's uh, 160 right now. Yeah. And yeah, so he'd be just one would be able to do it. Yeah, it seems like yeah, that, the four dice even threw me off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clean it up, gentlemen. <laughs> All right, so big N from Ryan. He's going to get five cards. His opponent will get four, but Ryan needs to draw a single water energy off of these five cards to get the big knockout here. If he can, he's going to be in some oh, trouble. Oh, no. Oh, no. Water energy would be huge. And he could knock out Glycepot, and then he could just space beacon to get it back to attack. But no water energy at all. And he has to retreat and just send out Froki as a sacrifice and pass. Yeah, not even a splash energy to potentially save these uh, Greninjas from just being knocked out and not coming back up to the hand. So Ryan finding himself in a pretty bad spot if Azul's able to get out of the active. Uh, any card like a, a Guzma would be fantastic for him here. See another heavy ball. Could search for the Wimpod, but decides not to. And we'll see if Azul can move out his Tapu Lele GX. Can he find another Float Stone this turn? And looks like, well, just going to play the end. He decides not to attach to the active. You know, he could have attached to that Tapu Lele GX and uh, retreated and at least gotten a knockout here. But it's like he's opting to attach to the bench and hope to draw a Float Stone to retreat. That was another big thing that happened with the Field Blower. Discarded the Float Stone from that Tapu Lele GX. Right, and uh, I don't know if Azul has it. He has pretty good cards for the following turn with more Grass Energy and the Guzma in his hands. But uh, this turn was relatively weak, and now uh, with no tool on that Garboder, uh, Ryan can come up, and if he has Water Energies, we're in the same spot as we were last turn. Yeah, the awkward thing for Ryan is he has no energy in play right now, and he has the Froki active, so... If he wants to retreat, he has to use his attachment for the turn on Froki. And you can only retreat once per turn. So 
all he could really do is attach, retreat, and then giant water shuriken. Yeah. He can knock out the one Goliath spot, but then there's another one waiting for him. And you just let him get a free shot at your Greninja break. Yeah, <laughs> and you, since you attach to the active, you also can't attach splash energy. So you can't even potentially save those resources. Uh, I think that's why Azul did what he did. He realized that even if my opponent retreats in giant water shurikens, it's not really that bad for me. Yeah. Ryan now is going to end himself, get himself five cards. Try to find some answers here. Definitely wants to find more water energies and potentially another field blower just in the case Azul's able to get that tool down next turn. And now if you're Ryan, you have to wonder what is the best line of play? Do you go for the straight knockout on that Kalisopod GX or do you try to spread the damage out and go for the big Espeon EX Miraculous Shine? to try to win that way. Uh, if you go that route, if Azul were to miss a way to retreat here, it could be a pretty big deal. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what he does. Yeah. All right, just going right for it. Taking the two prize cards and going down to three. But uh, again, he cannot retreat again. Cannot attach to attack, so Gonna see the knockout of that's in it. Oh my goodness. Double floatstone from Azul. Gonna see the first impression knockout. Garbotoxin is back. This does not look good for our Greninja player. Yeah, Ryan needs to find more field blower now. And uh, even then, he doesn't have a way to stop this Kaleisopod if a double colorless energy were to come down. So he's gotta have to find a way to combat all of this uh, with all the weakness in play and uh, running out of Froakies to get more Greninjas down. He might be just limited to these two for the rest of the game. Yeah, I'm not sure how many field blowers he's used so far, but I know at least one, and there are only two in his deck. So it's a chance he might not have abilities for the rest of the game, and if that's the case, I don't know how he's gonna win this one. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely looking bleak then. Sycamore draws him into a lot of cards that don't do too much. He found some splash energy and a super rod, but uh, looks like attacking into here is gonna be pretty awkward for him. And yeah, just Moonlight Slash for 80 damage. Uh, hopefully being able to use your giant water shuriken next turn and set up a knockout, but it's, it's oh. rough. <laughs> just another first impression from Azul though. Only 60 damage. Uh, that was a big missed opportunity for him now. Yeah. Yeah, this is a big opening for Ryan. If he can, you know, find that field blower, get some giant water shurikens off, could make a comeback here. Uh, he could even just retreat into Espeon EX and Miraculous Shine and knock out this Galicipod. He's got some options. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's, 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 both decks are so, volatile and uh, Azul's <laughs> just if his hand doesn't work out for him he's just stuck doing nothing and Ryan can't do too much either because he needs to use giant water shurikens and they're locked out <laughs> so uh, looks like he is eyeing up some some alternate routes here and might be using that Espeon just to get a prize card yeah put him down to two which means he would just have to knock out one GX to win the game Certainly might not be a bad option here. Yeah, especially when Azul's down to just one more attacker, it looks like also that he might just be all in on that final Galisopod. Do you see Super Rod shuffling in, Greninja Break, Water Energy, and Tapu Fini GX. Tapu Storm GX could be useful in the late stages of this game. Yeah. Uh, he can Miraculous Shine to return the Galisopod GX back to Azul's hand, and the Wimpod then gets knocked out, so. He's only left with one Wimpod, so if he can Tapu Storm that back into his deck, yeah. he'll have no way to get Glycopod out. Azul has no one-hit knockout potential here. Already used his GX attack for the game, so looks like he is going to be able to only do 150 damage, which is still respectable, but he's <laughs> not going to be able to, to clean up the way he wants to. Potentially could set up for a Tapu Coco spread to knock out that Espeon if he wants, but I, I think a lot of those resources are already gone. And now he does get another Wimpod down. So even a Tapu Storm doesn't quite lock him out of the game. And this is still pretty much anyone's game at this point. I think 
a big factor will be whether or not Ryan finds his field blower. You know, Got to get those abilities back. But uh, even so, these tech cards like the Espeon EX can come in handy. But yeah. we do see the first impression for 150 damage. How will Ryan respond? Looks like he's got some more pieces with a Greninja break. Splash energy's coming down. Uh, haven't seen too many enhance hammers out of Azul, but uh, he hasn't really had the option to play them. So uh, that might just be what Azul's deck is left being. You have a few energies and some hammers. And at this point, you know, Ryan just might run in there and hit him with the big Moonlight Slash and say, hey, if you draw double colorless energy, well, congrats. If you don't, this game's over. Right. I guess Acerola. Well, <laughs> even if he too. If, if he does get the double colorless, he's also going to open up the the Tapu Storm to happen too, though. So. All right. So 110 damage off the Moonlight Slash. Does Azul draw something to prevent his opponent from winning? Looks like he has a Guzma in hand. I can at least save his uh, Galisopod GX. And yeah, with the Guzma, he could go after, yeah, Espeon EX. Yeah, it's one way to do it. And this Tapu Lele GX is gonna go with the uh, energy drive, going down to one prize. And now it's up to Ryan. Does he find his field blower? It looks like he's got a Skyla, perhaps. Is it in his deck? He's got field blower. I think he wins. Yeah, I don't think he has it. He might have already used them. Oh no, it's not at his prizes, is it? Yeah, he's looking diligently through the deck to see if there's just anything that can help him out here. He may have used both field blowers, and if that's the case, he can't get the win here. Yeah, he uh, he might just be stuck uh, using bubble. <laughs> uh, I, it's the only real way I see him to prevent a Glycopod from coming active and taking a knockout on any Pokemon on his side of the field. Yeah, he is going to Skyler for the Sycamore and then Brooklet Hill for that Tapu Fini GX. It's, I mean, he could bubble or just send out the Tapu Fini since that's the only thing in his deck that can take an attack here. Yeah, he can... Hit for 20. Do you have to switch? I don't think you have to. Yeah, I think it's a uh, you may, or you can just tap just shuffle it in. Yeah. <laughs> but if Azul has a uh, Guzma on this turn, he will take this series 2-0. Does he have the game-winning Guzma? Draws card for the turn, and maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna leave us all wondering. Uh, yeah, can't see what he really has in his hand there. It does have Acerola, so okay. he's going to be able to pick up all that damage on the Golisopod. So no win this turn. He, he can honestly just start attaching grass energies. Yeah, <laughs> uh, do it the old-fashioned way, the theme deck style. <laughs> Get all those grass on there, and uh, if with just the 120 on the Tapu Fini, that means that next turn any of these Pokemon will be knocked out if he has access to that grass energy. There is no Tapu Storm available to shuffle in this uh, Glycopod GX. And uh, now it's Bubble. <laughs> sure seems like it. Uh, I think Azul has to be comfortable, you know, after Ryan played his Skyla and didn't grab a Field Blower. Yeah. Uh, you have to know at that point, you have pretty much locked this up. And I don't really know what Ryan can do. I am curious to know if it's in his prizes or if he's simply played both at this point but the way it stands now I don't see any way for Ryan to really prevent this inevitable loss from Glycopod I mean like you said you can always bubble but yeah. you know, I gotta think Azul has a Guzma left and I, I think Azul has more deck left also yeah. so <laughs> you, can, you can stall as much as you want but you're gonna run out of time yeah the only other thing um so yeah, he could bubble, and he could have to. He would have to power up Starmie for Star Freeze. Here's the first bubble, and yeah, yeah it's that's the last bubble. All right. <laughs> <laughs> gonna say you could go deep and go for Starmie Star Freeze, yep. and uh, that does 30 damage, and you flip for paralysis. So yeah. <laughs> six turns of that, you got yourself.